I often get the question, how can I feel more motivated or what can I do to sustain my motivation over time? And uh, just hearing just do it or telling themselves just do it is not something that can evoke action in them. But perhaps surprisingly, today's conversation about music offers us a particularly potent tool to increase motivation. And that's because one of the fundamental properties of listening to music is that it evokes activation of these premotor and motor circuits within our brain and body. That is, the neural circuits whose specific job is to mobilize our body from its current position and state to a new position and state. So for those of you that listen to music while you work out or prior to when you work out, you are definitely on to something. For those of you that don't, that's fine too. It turns out that when we listen to music, it activates nearly every piece of our brain. And certainly with language, it's very hard to explain our feelings with words in a way that can convey the way that we feel, even in a state of extreme happiness. Words fall short of explaining how we feel inside. And yet, as I mentioned earlier, music not only can describe emotions, it can evoke emotions within us. And music can do that so powerfully because the nerve cells, the neurons in your brain, as well as the nerve cells in your body can become activated by music in a way that the frequency of those neural impulses comes to match the frequency of the sounds that you're hearing in your outside environment. And so when we hear music that conveys emotion, that evokes emotion, and especially when we hear music that conveys a sense of intent from the outside, we too start to feel as if we need to move or respond to that music in a particular way. And yet that music is communicating emotion, it's evoking emotion, but even if you're not swaying the tiniest bit, your patterns of breathing are changing and your heart rate is changing. And through changes in your heart rate, your heart rate variability is increasing. So if ever you wanted a tool or protocol that was easy to use, but could positively impact your mental and physical health, well, listening to your favorite music is that protocol. But this more recent meta-analysis really illustrates that when we are listening to music, we are subconsciously changing our patterns of breathing. We are inhaling in anticipation of certain things happening in the music. We're exhaling when we feel a relief of tension. We may even just be listening to music that we don't think is impacting our physiology at such a core level, but indeed it is. Music is able to route into our nervous system at levels below our conscious awareness. So if you've ever wondered why music can change how you feel so robustly, well, it's doing that at a deep foundational level of your nervous system. Indeed, at the levels of your nervous system that typically are not in your conscious awareness. So hopefully it's becoming clear just how absolutely powerful music is at evoking different physiological responses within you. Now, with that said, we can ask, what does the scientific literature tell us about how certain types of music evoke certain types of emotions? Well, what we can say with confidence is that music that makes us quote unquote, happy, tends to be faster music, meaning music that on average contains 140 to 150 beats per minute or faster. And there's some other features to quote unquote, happy music, if you will, that it tends to be in a major key, that if there are lyrics to that music, that the lyrics tend to report things that are happy or get this, even if the lyrics were complete nonsense, it still evoked the same increase in the level of happiness in the subjects than when compared to the music containing coherent lyrics around happy events. What this means is that the cadence of music is no doubt the critical variable when one is trying to shift one's mood from neutral to positive and so on and so forth. But there are also interesting data that support the use of music for shifting one out of a state of heightened anxiety. In any event, there are data that have explored whether or not specific musical stimuli can be used to significantly reduce anxiety, which shows that people that listen to a particular song that I'll describe in a moment, experience up to 65% reductions in their anxiety. And that's a significant reduction in anxiety. In this case was accomplished with just three minutes of listening to this one particular song. So what is this magical anxiety reducing song? The title of the song is Weightless by Marconi Union. And I think this three minutes of listening to this one song should at least be tried by anyone that's trying to reduce their anxiety. On the topic of cognitive work, one of the most common questions I get is, 
what sorts of sounds or music should I listen to in order to increase my state of productivity, motivation, concentration, etc. In any event, there is some evidence that listening to 40 hertz binaural beats can enhance concentration and focus. If you don't like them, if they don't work for you, then, um, you know, there's certainly no obligation to use them. To be honest, I've never done this strict control experiment on myself of listening to the 40 hertz binaural beats. Rather, if I want to heighten my level of focus or rule out distractions, what I will do is I will listen to either white noise or brown noise while I do work, or I will listen to 40 hertz binaural beats while I do certain types of work. And this is really important in the controlled studies that have been carried out as to whether or not people perform better on cognitive tasks that require a lot of focus, especially learning tasks that compared silence in the background to purely instrumental music in the background to music with lyrics in the background to one's favorite music with or without lyrics. The data are very clear. It's very clear that when people work in silence, they perform better than when they work with music instrumentals in the background and they perform even less well when they listen to music with lyrics in the background and then people perform especially poorly when they listen to their favorite music while doing cognitive work takeaways from it are very clear and it's always nice when things are clear right it's clear that if we want to focus and learn that working in silence or with white noise or brown noise or 40 hertz binaural beats is going to be preferable to working while listening to music. But if you're going to listen to music while you work, that is do cognitive work, then you're going to want to listen to music that is purely instrumental. And ideally, the music would be somewhat faster than 140 to 150 beats per minute. The point here is simply this, that many people out there including myself, have been listening to some of our favorite music while working, but it's very clear as to why that degrades cognitive performance. We know, for instance, that when we read, we are creating a semantic narrative in our own head. And when we listen to music with lyrics, especially music with lyrics that we recognize, the semantic content of the song, the lyrics, competes with our comprehension of the narrative within our head from the material that we're supposed to be learning. So now it should be sort of obvious why listening to your favorite music that includes lyrics while trying to learn something else is going to impede learning. It's because you've got multiple scripts, multiple dialogues happening in your head. But if you're somebody who is going to do, say, a 90-minute or even 60-minute or even 30-minute bout of work, and you are going to get up for a moment and use the restroom, or you're going to uh, take a break in between bouts of work. So maybe you work for 30 minutes, take 10 minutes or five minutes off, or 90 minutes, take 30 minutes off. Listening to music in those breaks, it seems, can increase our ability to focus and to learn new material once we return to those bouts of cognitive focus. Now, when it comes to physical exertion, many people, including myself, like to listen to music while performing that physical exercise. So this is something that I believe is going to be highly individual. Some people do very well to listen to music, literally in between and during their sets of resistance training throughout their entire runs. It's going to be individual. You have to figure out what's best for you. However, one of the most interesting things about the scientific literature on this shows that if people listen to music, in particular music that tends to be faster, listening to that music in between bouts of exertion, so in the rest between sets of resistance training, can indeed enhance performance in a way that, at least by my read of the data, exceeds that which is observed when people just listen to music throughout. Now, the good news is that listening to novel forms of music, music that you don't typically listen to for 30 to 60 minutes per day, has been shown to enhance learning and the acquisition of new skills and in particular, when you listen to novel forms of music and you pay attention to that music, not just letting it um, play in the background, that too has been demonstrated to expand the brain's capacity for neuroplasticity, its ability to modify itself and make it better at learning other sorts of things, both cognitive and physical.